how are you? It's Leslie from Scrapping Life Away. I hope you're all having a really great day, great week. Um, I am here today to do a collaboration with Gina B. D. Z <laughs> I'm here to do a collaboration with Gina B. Aaron's Designs and Shannon Green. Shannon Green creates has created. Um, these wonderful journal covers they're, they're called custom keepers and they are made out of vinyl pressed vinyl um, and actually they're made from billboard vinyl so they're very very sturdy I've already taken out the um, elastic bands that um, hold your signatures and this little dot here is um, a knot to hold a knot for the other piece of elastic to come around and um, close this up but you'll see that at the end but what our what we're going to do over at Gina Aaron's designs is we're going to show how we can take Gina's products and mix media up Shannon's custom keepers um, I did one not too long ago and I did both sides the inside and the outside that way it was um, reversible dual sided I could just depends on you know how you wanted to do it um, the person that bought it could you know use it this way or use it this way totally up to that person so what I'm going to do is I have already sanded this down just to um, remove some of the shiny part of it um, and so we're good to go and ready to get started on this project. I'm going to go ahead and put a layer or two of gesso down on this just to give myself a blank canvas. So let me get that started and then I'll be back. Okay, I've used my homemade gesso and um, I will link to the recipe uh, that I did a, a video recipe that I did of this. I'll put the I'll put the link to that in the description below. But I have just sewed both sides and because it had such a really dark color to it, um, I probably used about three coats on this side and I think just two coats on this side. Um, sanded it, poked the holes, poked those uh, so you could see those. I'm going to go ahead, this is a new paint it's um, new to me actually I haven't hasn't been opened yet but it's deco art Americana and the colors honey brown so I'm gonna go ahead and paint both sides of this actually I don't need to pull that out I can just well yeah I do um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint both sides of this and dry that up and then when I get to that why can't I find the daggone usually they have a little strip that's makes it easy to get this stupid plastic wrap off um, but anyway I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and paint both sides and then we're gonna make some marks on it so I'll be right back I'm sure you don't want to watch me uh, paint pretty pretty self-explanatory I'll be right back okay so I have covered both the front and the inside with the honey brown and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of Gina's stencils first I'm going to add some honey brown and I'm also going to add some buttermilk to that to lighten it up Ooh, if I could get it open jeez this buttermilk I should just buy it by the gallon I just love it I'm going to lighten it up for this round and then for some of the other texture I'm going to um, add some dark marks as well but let me mix this up a little bit here because I want light and dark texture on this and with mixed media the key is layers lots and lots of layers um, the one thing that I've learned is the more layers the better 
so I'm just going to take my sponge here and kind of bring it over here and I'm going to dab it off because I don't want I don't want it to be sopping so that it would get underneath here as you can see it has done in the past so I'm just going to in random spots just kind of add this in and I don't know if I'm going to do the inside with this or not I haven't really decided see how that's kind of bloppy it's because I'm going too heavy too heavy handed on it and I'm not blotting off my sponge but that's alright no one's going to really see it Like I said, no rhyme or reason. I just kind of want to get all the different areas. Top, bottom, middle. And we're going to add more as we go along. Okay, I'm going to give this a dry. I can't stop. I'll tell you what, I'm my worst thing is I just can't seem to stop. All right, I'm going to set this down. I'm going to dry it up and I'll be right back. Thanks. Okay, I have this all dried up. The next concoction mixture I'm going to do some of this uh, water off my brush. First of all, this, um, the X's on here, that's from Genus Stencil Four Square One. And I will link that in the um, in the description below. Um, the next thing I've done is I've taken some of the um, honey brown and cinnamon brown and mixed those together to get a little bit darker color here on my palette. And then I'm going to notice I'm not changing my sponge out. can't really see that too much, can you? Boy, I think I need some more brown on that. Darker brown. Because I want it to kind of contrast. Oh, there we go. Yes, that's much better. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, I love Gina stencils. I you I love using um, using these in conjunction with some of my other texture um, tools that I will be using on this as well. Oh yeah, I'm loving that. Okay. All right, that's all I really wanted to do. I may go, I don't know which direction I'm going to go. A little lighter, a little darker. But let me dry this okay. up. I'll be right back. Now I'm going to come in with just the cinnamon brown. Um, and if you've noticed, I'm kind of using a, um, a little bit of everything in the brown family. But yet I am... Um, I'm mixing them, I'm getting them lighter and darker, and um, so that way you get great contrast, but yet you're staying within the same color family. Um, that's just what I enjoy doing. Oh, and this is just an old sponge, um, spongy thing for, uh, I think it was probably a pot holder kind of thing that I was gifted and it makes awesome texture and as you can see I'm just dipping it on my palette and sponging you know 
sponging off the excess. Okay, that looks good enough. Guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to dry this up and be right back. Okay, I'm back and this is pretty dry. And now I'm going to go lighter by adding the buttermilk, which is going to tone some of this down. And I'm going to put it on with bubble wrap. So I'll get this open and pour this out on my palette. And I'll link all the paints that I used um, in the description below. Um, I'm a member of the Deco Arts um, Helping Artist Program, so I really enjoy their um, I enjoy their paint and a lot of their other products that they have. So yeah, I'm just going to tone this down now using the bubble wrap. It's kind of like watching, you know, watching someone paint. <laughs> I know this is probably enthralling all of you. And you notice I'm just kind of, um, I'm not like squishing this into the uh, vinyl. I'm just kind of lightly tapping it so it adds a very nice texture to it but yet it throws you can still see the um, the other texture that I put on there but it just kind of pushes it to the back and I like that Okay, guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> yep, I'm going to dry. And, you know, I I cut that part out because I really don't think you want to listen to this, drying this. It'll blow out your ears. Well, it won't blow out your ears, but it's just nobody wants to listen to that. So I'll be right back. Hi there. Okay, the one thing that I wanted to do on this edge, I'm going to take my finger just dip it in this brown paint and I'm just gonna finger paint this edge I still have a few more steps to go on this um, project but I just wanted to make sure that um, before I continued that I got these edges done and the good thing is because it's it's a uh, vinyl. Sometimes the edges are uneven and by using my finger I can make sure that that brown paint is getting in there easier than if I were to see, like if I were to use a sponge. See like how that white's showing there? This way the edges will all be a uniform color. It'll give it a more finished look. And I just just love these. These things are so useful. I love that Shannon makes these and I love that we're able to um, partner up and use her keepers, her custom keepers with Gina's designs. And the paint that I love so much. So now I'm just going to kind of look through this to see if there's any edges, part of the edge that I may have messed with is some white vinyl popping through. And there is a little bit over here. I'm going to actually give that a little bit of a dry. I'm going to clean up my hands. I'll be right back. Hi there. All right, for the next part of the process for this cover is I'm going to use a dress pattern. And we are going to use matte medium to put this on. 
I picked this up probably at a um, flea market. Goodness gracious, come on. Here we go. I mean, I'm not kidding. There is like tons of this for a dollar. Do you have any idea how many journals you could cover with this for a dollar? What I'm going to do, oh my, there's so much of this. I'm just going to start ripping and putting this down. And like I said, there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm going to do this. But I'm really thinking I don't want the black. So when I do that, I'm just going to put some of my matte medium down. And I buy my matte medium in a larger jar. And it's just a lot easier for me to put it into one of these, just like my gesso. And go from there. Now you want to be kind of careful. You want to be gentle with it. And I'm just going to keep ripping pieces, pieces, parts. And I know some of this is going to dry quickly because um, I've got my fan going because it's really warm in here today. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry too much about the holes because I'll just poke them through on the other side. So it's okay to overlap it a little bit. It won't hurt anything. And when you put it when you put this on, once you think you have a pretty good amount on here, you're going to want to push just a little bit to make sure you get all those air bubbles out because those air bubbles can be unsightly for some. You know, maybe you might like that air bubbles. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, but I don't particularly care for air bubbles, so I'm just going to. And I'm going off the edge a bit here because I'm going to trim it. So well, let's put it this way, make it easy on myself. And it's a little bit of a wrinkle in there from the from it being folded. But that's all right. I kind of smoothed it out, smoothed it out, I think. This just really adds a nice texture to your project. So it kind of gets sandwiched in there. There's matte medium below, and then there's matte medium on the top, so it seals that in nicely. How cool is that? Now when that dries, that's going to be really neat. go around the edge a little bit more over here. I think I might have missed a spot. All right. Maybe up here a little bit. All right. I'm going to finish the other side of this with the same process and then I will dry it and we'll be back. Well, how about that? It's dry. Um, I have bent it to kind of break this in a little bit. And plus, I need to make sure that my holes are still there. <laughs> but I wish you could feel, I wish we had feel a vision. I wish you could feel this. It just feels so good. It feels so good. All right, now I'm going to do some stamping because, of course, I'm not done. But I need to know where my holes are. So I'm just going to kind of hold this up. I will do a better job of it later when I'm ready to thread it. But I just need to know right now where my holes are. 
So let me see. To really turn it at an angle so that the light hits it just right. This is really turning out to be super cool. Shannon Green has many different sizes of her custom keepers. To, and to be honest with you, I can't even keep track of all the different sizes. Um, I know there's a couple I want to I want to get more of. One of which um, I can't wait to I can't wait to get is the. Um, she has one that holds up like three composition notebooks. I think that is just awesome. All right, I want to line this up so that my this is going to be so cool to hold a small little journal to keep in my purse. Okay, let's. Oh, and this is a pokey tool. <laughs> it's um, Tim Holtz's Tonic Studios pokey tool. I love it. It's great. And I love the fact that the pointy thing goes away. Okay. So now I know where my holes are and I'm going to get to stamping on something else that goes on top of here. So let me get what I'm going to stamp on together and we'll be right back. Hi, it's me. Did you miss me? I'm back. <laughs> okay. This is what I use to stamp on and it has... Uh, j I just kind of redid it. Let me uh, bring you out just a little bit because you guys are way close. There you go. All right, this is made up of a piece of wood that um, somebody had given to me. And it just had a single layer of this foam on it. And it had gotten so well used that I ended up putting two more layers on top and um, I just used, uh, what did I use? I used this. I used Fabri-Tac to glue it all down onto the wood. Um, the reason why I did that is because um, why I glued it on this. Number one, this is great to um, stamp on as a stamping surface because it's got lots of cushion. And the other side is great because you can cut on it, you can heat emboss on it. Um, it's, a, it's a nice solid surface that as you can see, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's very well loved. <laughs> but it's nice and lightweight. So if I'm traveling somewhere to a crop or whatever, this travels nicely um, in my bag and it's not heavy. So that's a bonus bonus and we all know how heavy some of our bags can get so with that being said let's get to stamping all right what I have here is look I have my pattern again and yes I'm going to stamp on my pattern because I want this to go I'm going to stamp on this and then put it down with the um, with the matte medium and this way it will kind of um, just soak right it'll just blend right into the background of my custom keeper that is now nice and dry the first thing I'm gonna do is get a block I guess this will do and I want to get it pretty straight on there I like my blocks that have lines on them just so that I can line things up nicely. And what I'm going to use is my stays on in jet black. Now, um, I already know how many of these I want to stamp out because I've already kind of fiddled with this and figured out how many I'm going to need. I'm going to need five of these. So, let's get to stamping. One. Do you really want to watch me sit here and stamp out five of these? Nope, I didn't think so. 
All right, I'm going to stamp out five, and then I'm going to turn. I'm going to show you a little secret that I use to um, to get these out. So, let me finish stamping these and stamping out the words, and I'll be right back. Hi there. All right, I have finished stamping my images onto the dress pattern, and this and the paintbrushes, this border, this is actually a, a border, and the paintbrushes, and these are on Gina's stamp set number 11. So that's where I got those from. And then I also stamped out the begin, um, this is one of my favorite sayings, begin, believe, become. And I used the um, Prima uh, Alpha set. I love this thing because I can put my, my alphas in here, put it in my stays on or whatever ink I'm using, and I just love it. And then just press it down, excuse me, and it's perfect. And because this is a nice squishy surface, I can just push way down and I get a really good, um, I get a really good impression. So I'm going to show you how to take this off. I'm going to move this over here out of my way to cover up my ink so it doesn't dry out. Okay, and actually I'm going to set my ink on there. All right, I have a water brush here. And it's got some water in it. And I'm just going to make sure that my brush is wet. Like that. Ooh, see it's already got on there. Now, stays on ink is waterproof. So it's not going to, um, it's not going to run. So this is just like tissue paper. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly go around my images here with the water. I'm going to use my finger to very gently and carefully pull this away. And what that does is it kind of creates a bit of a jagged edge, which in turn will help it to blend, <coughs> excuse me, will help it to blend um, a little bit easier into the background. Now I want to be careful because you can see that it's kind of seeped over there a little bit. But yeah, there we go. Uh, yep. So that's how I am going to do that. Can you see what I'm doing? Let me bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, can you see where it's wet there? And I want to move not real quick, but fairly quick because I don't want it to dry. And I do have a fan going in my room, so it will dry rather quickly. See, I, I pulled the tip of that off, but that's okay. It's not that much of it that it's really going to make a difference. And see, it's already dried, so I'm going to come back in. And just kind of using my finger as a guide. Oh, that was close. I almost got the got the edge of that paintbrush. Oh, and we're almost there. Got it. There we go. All right. 
I'm going to go ahead and do that to, whoops, there we go. There we are. Don't you love I get ink all over? I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm the messiest crafter. I have just a mess going on in my hands. But I'm going to go ahead and do this to all my other images. And I'll be back. Okay, my friends, I am ready to start going down my stamped images. Let me get this well, let me give this a shake real quick. Okay. So again, I want to put my glue down first because we're going to sandwich our images in between the glue. So I'm going to set that there. I'm going to move that. I want it to the hole, but not quite. Give that a little bit of room. Oh boy, that's not going to give me much room to jiggle. So it might not be quite straight, but that's okay. And then I'm going to come back over it with more glue. Just to seal that in. I've got a little bit of a wrinkle there. I'm going to try and smooth that out with my finger. But not too much. Because that is kind of part of it. Boy, that really stands out nice, doesn't it? Oh, this is going to be great. Okay. So let's put down the next part. Which is my... Alright, now I'm going to have to be cautious with this because I want it to appear just right. Make sure I don't have too much glue on my fingers. Okay, now let me see. Alright, I do want to take a little bit off on here. I know this might give it Let's see how that does. Oh yeah. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, sorry. I got my own head in the way there. Sorry, guys. All right. Look at that, Lordy B. So now do you see how that just kind of disappears right into the background? This also works well with tissue paper um, like that you can buy for wrapping gifts in. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. Look at that. I love it. I love it. All right, I'm going to finish collaging my pieces on, and I'll be back, because I'm sure, you know, watching glue dry is just, you know, the highlight of your night. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, I have all of my images glued down using my matte medium, and I'm just going to give it a quick heat set. But before I do, I just want you to take a look and see. Look at how well that just melts right into the background. I mean, I could have stamped right onto the surface, but it's not a real smooth surface, so I would not have gotten a very, um, I didn't want to take the chance of not getting a really crisp image, and so that's why I did what I did. Plus, it also shows you a really new, neat technique. So, I love being able to use Gina's images on here. Um, I think it it does the it does it proud. I'm really I'm really really pleased with it. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a heat a heat set and dry it up, and I'll be right back because we know you don't want to listen to this. Hello there, friends. We are done. Yay! Um, I'm going to back you out just a tad. There we go. That way you don't have my gross hands all up in your face there. But yes, look how wonderful this turned out. Isn't that awesome? Now, I went ahead and strung it um, using twine. Now, when Shannon um, sends it to you, she sends it with 
elastic, the white elastic, and you can just use it white. You can color it. Um, you can coffee stain it, tea stain it. Um, but because I was going for a little bit more of a of a old world feel, I thought that the twine was better suited for it. So I'll open it up for you, and I did trim the pages so that when I closed it, they didn't stick out on the edges here. But how cool is that? I have three signatures in here. You could have four, but in this one, um, I have two. Um, but as I said, when you when you when you purchase a custom keeper from Shannon, she will give you directions on how to um, restring it. So go ahead and pull that um, elastic out. Just pull it right out. And um, for this, let me see. Where's the middle? Here it is. I just have a. I just knotted it. and pulled it through with a, um, a needle that I use, like a darning needle kind of thing. It's the needle that I use when I um, do signatures, when I'm poking holes or sewing a signature into a book. But yeah, how cool is that? So then this just comes around like this. And I can tie it. I can throw it in my purse to do um, some sketching or just for note taking. But how awesome is that? I didn't tie that real tight. Um, but I made sure that it was like right across here so it didn't go across my paintbrushes. But there we go. There is our custom keeper. And thank you so much to Shannon for letting us um, play with her stuff. I love it. And again, look at how wonderfully it all works with Gina's with Gina's designs. Absolutely awesome. So I hope you stop by Shannon's store. I will leave a link in the description below to both Shannon's Etsy, Gina's Etsy, um, Shannon's YouTube channel. Let me tell you, if you don't know Shannon Green, um, you're missing out Please stop by her channel. Um, she is not just not just is she a really great teacher. She's really a great person, and I'm really honored to call Shannon a friend. Um, and she's just a, she's just a blessing to my life, and I'm really excited that I could um, be part of a design team that gets to showcase some of her products. And what a great collaboration! This has been a fantastic um, experience. I loved it. And I hope you love it too. I hope you stop by and pick up um, some custom keepers from Shannon and some really cool designs from Gina. So until then, hope to see you again very, very soon. And remember, please be nice to each other. It's really not that difficult. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody.